Hi ah, yes, so welcome back. We are going to start again with our lab 3 question 4. So this question it wants us to return the date and the day of today's date and also provided a search date from the user. We are going to find uh, the day of that particular search date and provided the condition that the search date is always going to be the past date. It means we don't have to worry about any cases where the user input is a future date compared to today's. So let's look at our main method. So in this main method, I'm using a, a standard library from Java, which is calendar, to find the day of today's date. So it will return an integer. So this is the calendar.get. Yeah. So this thing, it will return an integer, uh, which indicating the day of the date being set for the calendar. So we can see a get day by calendar here. As you can see, I have my custom uh, array, which have a list of strings indicating the day of each index. So let's say that if the index result is zero, it means it's a Sunday, so it will return the Sunday here. Then uh, so on and so forth. If it's a one, then a Monday. Yeah. Another two variables that I have is a leap year months and non leap year months, which uh, tell me okay how many days there are for that month even if it's a leap year and even if it's a non-leap year. And it's leap is a method which I created to help me to identify whether that particular targeted year is a leap year or is a normal year. Right, so as you can see, to get the today's date, I will just use a new date and set the calendar time and call the method provided by the standard library to get the date. Day. But for the search date, we are not going to do the same thing because the question wants us to implement ourselves, so we are not allowed to do the standard library approach. Anyway, the parameters I need are seven. So print that is my recursive method. Then I will have to convert the search string into year integer, month integer, uh, day integer, as well as the today's date into integer as well. So these six are to converting the year, month, and day into integer. The last parameter is to get the index of the today's day. So let's say if it's a Sunday, then it will be a zero. If it's a Saturday, then you will be a six. So I will go to the recursive method now. So for every recursion, we want to have a stopping condition and conditions that lead to the stopping condition. So in this case, because we are not going to worry about any cases where the targeted date is a future date, yeah, it's not going to happen. So we can just use the simplest approach. The simplest one is to just minus one, minus one day, minus one day, until the today's day is equal to the targeted date. Then that will be our stopping condition. Yeah, definitely I implement it that way. Yeah. So year equal to year, month equal to month, and day equal to day. Then uh, I will can, uh, I'll be able to look up the days of that particular date, right? Then if I haven't reached the stopping condition, no matter what, I'm going to decrement my day by one. Yeah. So, as you can see, here, yeah, I will do my, uh, minus by one. And there's a condition which I indicate, okay, if the day is more than zero, it means I'm still in the current month. Then I don't have to worry about anything. I'll just do a recursion, putting the previous day, replacing the today's day. And definitely the previous day index is going to be used, yeah. Because I'm uh, minus one, minus one day, minus one day every time during the decryption. So this is fixed. Right, Sunday becomes Saturday, Saturday becomes Friday, and so on and so forth. So here, if the day is more than zero, but if it is equal to zero, it means we need to go back to the previous month already. Right, so the previous month is minus by one, and same logic to the previous day. If my previous month is within the range of one and twelve, it means it is uh, January until December. Then I don't have to go to the previous year. I can just find the number of day okay in previous day and replace the month and as well as the day. Else, if it's equal to zero, I need to go to previous year already. So previous year is minus by one. The month is twelve. The day is thirty-one. Yeah, definitely hard coded. Also be, also can. Yeah. 
then I'll call the print that again, replacing the previous year, previous month, and previous day. So the codes are pretty lengthy, but the logic is very simple. I'm just going to minus by one every time recursion until I reach the targeted date. Whenever I minus by one day, my day index will be minus by one as well. Yeah, so these are the simplest way and the most uh, inefficient way that we can do to solve this question. Definitely you can come with your own improvement in terms of the performance, but you need to be careful that there are certain months, uh, yeah, February is going to be different if it is a leap year and if it is a normal year. Yeah, just be careful of this condition and you can make any optimization that you can think of. Yeah, so that's it for the lab three question four. Do tell me if you have any questions. See you again.